was asking a question. What do you mean by that? That's a question. Otherwise, I know what I know. And what I know is in the context of right, wrong thinking. So I would respond to Ben from there. Assuming that I know what he means, I have an answer already. Where is choice? Not here. Living in choice, on the other hand, means having a lot of courage because most people don't live out of choice. So it means we take a risk in the name of what? And then you choose. Take a risk in name of what? You have your question? Yeah. In the name of what would you take a risk? For you. In the name of what would you take a risk? Of asking, discovering, not knowing, slowing down. Just my nature. But then again, it goes back to it. Slower and. I my part of that is just my nature, but I would say um, it goes back to what you said before, right? It's Which about is? survival. Right. I, for me, it's not about survival. For me, it's much deeper than survival. Survival, well, I can function. I want to live exactly. and flourish, not live, survive. Right. Um, okay. Live, get busy living or you get busy dying. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's another way to say it. But survival is what we all do. We well, go to work. We don't like it. We come back home. We don't like it. We go to work. We don't like it. We come back home. We don't like it. But when you said about survival before, yeah, in terms of the reptilian brain, yeah, you said the essence of that, right? Yeah, decide. Yes, right? yes. Okay. But so for survival, that, you need automatic mechanisms. Yeah. For living, you need thinking and choosing mechanisms. And learning. Hmm. Right. And, learning. and learning. Yes. 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 So you're saying that's the connection between the reptilian mind, right, and survival and living and dying, and the limbic and the prefrontal cortex of living. What is the, that this is the connection, what, what do you mean? Living and dying. I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if I only want to keep operating on survival mode, which is what we do most of the time, mm -hmm. I don't need anything new. I have it all. It's been digested, it's in, in my body, okay? Right, wrong thinking. Not enough for everybody. Separation, we know that. Fear, we know that. Anything new about it? No. What is the word you'd like to live in? Choice. Choice, so you have to do some work, which is the opposite of what you've been taught. Unlearning, relearning. But we've got to go beyond choice, right? We what? Don't we need to go beyond just choosing for me? Yes. Choosing for us. Like what is the beyond? beyond? Well, I like what you're if, saying. If my context is only choosing for me, then I'll just <coughs> fill my house with a bunch of stuff that I really don't need. Thank you for saying that. This is not the choice I need. This is the illusionary capitalistic choice. <coughs> I'm not interested. So choosing on behalf of... Choosing out of <coughs> need, not only for me. Yes, thank you for bringing that voice. The three intentions of the compass are connect, choose, influence. Connect, choose, influence. You can think about it for a year now. Because every day you can discover something you new, what that means to me. Yes? What do you mean by choosing out of me instead of for myself? What do you mean about that? Not, not, not instead of for myself. Choosing out of needs instead of uh, right wrong thinking. Okay? The, the other instead was not only for me, but instead for everybody, including everybody in my choices. The impact of my, of my actions. Usually we do that through guilt. So we say sorry, sorry, and we think we finished with this. No, I want to be conscious and look if there is an impact to my thinking, to my doing to you. Then I want to take responsibility by recognizing it and listening, not by justifying and excusing myself. That's an example. Is it clear? Yeah. Good. Tell me if not. 
Okay. So, we have the three powers. The brain that keeps doing what it knows. The society that keeps feeding us with, I don't want to use many, many words, nothing true. And the family, which is a branch of re-manifesting that. What is the world we want to live in? Choose a word for yourself now. Really write it down. What is the world I would like to live in? And there is no right answer. There's answer of now for you. Tomorrow there's going to be another answer. Now ask yourself another question, and then I would love to hear some people sharing this. What am I willing to do in order to create this world? It's not only which world would I like to live in or I want to live in. It's not enough. Because usually what they taught us, it's that they have to change so that I feel better. That's, that's the way we've been talked to. I'm angry because of you, said my mom, said my mom, my papa, or whatever. Right? That's the basic lesson of right wrong thinking. I'm angry because of you. Can I hear a few voices? What is the world that I would like to live in? And what am I willing to do for that? And this is a moment for you to act out of courage. Because it's not easy to speak in public because we might be judged. So, so you know, don't, remember, don't forget we're judging each other all the time. We are doing it. Why are we doing it? Is it clear now? Why are we judging? Survival. It's what? Survival. Yes. How does it help survival if I judge you? Safety. safety. How, do, wha, how does it help safety? For the future to see. For the moment. It's, the, it's for now. Okay? Because I look at you, okay, and my brain says danger. Why? Because we never met before. So I don't know how to react who you are, I cannot see inside of you. So the fastest way for survival is to judge you. Not because I am bad or you're bad. Nothing to do with reality. Zero reality. Just so that my body feels safer. So that I speak to you and I don't tremble. Oh, what am I gonna do with this? Aha, uh -huh, you are, mm -mm 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 -mm. now I know what to do. Mm -hmm. Clear? So this is why we will keep doing it till the day we die. Because it's fast and simple. Not real, not true. Okay, so we go over it. We translate the judgment into something that's underneath it. It's my need. But I will keep judging. Can we live with this in peace? Please. Why do you say no? Can you can give her the microphone to me? Can you repeat the question? Yes. I said, can we, for now, okay, live in peace with the idea that you will keep judging forever until there is, like, I don't know what, an enlightenment in the world. <coughs> Not sure it's coming soon. Yeah, I guess 
I guess we can live like that if, because it's quick and it's a formula and it it works, as you were saying. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's the difficulty for you? You said no when I said no. Right, right. I think I misunderstood your question. Okay, yeah. okay. So let's have it clear, okay? Why have it clear? Because this is a path to compassion. Because if I catch myself judging and I judge myself for judging, I'm trapped. If I catch myself judging, and I know it's as human as anything else, given the society I was born to, I can breathe and accept myself. <clears throat> can we do that for a moment? Can you prepare yourselves for the next judgment, which may be happening right now? <laughs> judging me, judging someone else by you, just like, because we know how to do it. Because it's easy. Why do we judge? It's easy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe. Yeah, right. it's safe. Past experiences. It's what? Past experience. Yes. And the past experience is easy for the reptilian brain to repeat. I know how to judge, so I'll judge again. <laughs> simple. Crazy, but simple. So what do we do with judgment? What can we do very different from what we have done until today? Translate them. Two, yes. Two more tools, okay? Write it down. One. This is a practice for life. Again, I am hearing myself, telling myself, and then you say the judgment. For example, I judge myself for being, what was it? Stupid? Idiot. Idiot? Okay. I'm hearing myself, telling myself that I'm an idiot. I'm judging my whatever, my husband, what was the judgment about him? He is what? Angry. No, this is not the judgment. What is the judgment? He's hostile. He's hostile, okay? I'm hearing myself, telling myself that he's hostile. If you practice this for half a year, your life will change. I can sign a paper if you want. <laughs> you take that, I give it to you. <laughs> but if you really practice, I did it for half a year until something started cracking in the, in the dense, automatic self-judgment. Because it's ugly to judge, right? Mm -hmm. What am I doing judging now? <laughs> I'm a person. Okay? Yet another proof how terrible I am. I was not an idiot, I was terrible. So you don't do, you don't, what you're saying is you practice not doing that? No. What I practice is recognizing the judgment. Recognizing. To wake up much faster from the nightmare of believing the judgment. The thing with the judgment is that I believe it as if I'm describing truth. Yeah. Like I'm saying, he's hostile, I'm an idiot. Yeah. My brain thinks I'm describing who I am or who this person is. Yeah. It sounds as if this says something true about someone, right? Yeah. And this is what it means, believe it. Yeah. Believe it means I'm not even checking my words. There's no question mark there. I know I'm an idiot. I know he is hostile. I know they are leaving me. And now you're just saying. No, no, no. The practice creates an inner observer. By saying, I'm hearing myself telling myself that I'm an idiot. At some point, I can hear like, like a I don't know, an inch of gap between the thought and my believing it. I can observe myself thinking. So not all of me is taken by the thinking. Because when I believe I'm an idiot, all my body moves like a body of an idiot and it's living out of fear. Right, Catherine, you know that. You yeah. know that. When you look at your husband, and he's on the phone, 
and all you have in your body is he's hostile and you have many more judgments about him because you're 10 years, you have enough judgments. And all your body believes that what you're saying is describing him because you're looking from the outside. How is your body going to react now other than adrenaline, cortisol, contracting, yelling? Because, not because he's hostile, because you believe you're thinking about him. Can you see the difference? With gentleness, not with self-horror that, oh, am I judging? I'm judging. This is it, period. When I say I'm hearing myself, telling myself, I create some part of me that can come out of the nightmare of believing the thought. And gradually I can start breathing and looking at it. Looking at it. Huh. I just judge myself or another. And breathe. Are you writing down? Thank you. Yeah. So I practiced that. I practiced that today. I just started reading this book. Yeah. And then I felt kind of fake doing it. What did you exactly practice? What did you practice? So when my son was telling me something over the phone, my initial reaction was to immediately pass judgment. Okay. And I knew I was coming to see you today and I wanted to start practicing this, so I just took shit, basically. What does and it mean? It means I just let him speak, which I thought was bullshit. You know, okay. I didn't believe okay. in him, but I okay. just kept quiet. Okay. And I just listened to him. Okay. And I was not my regular, strong, comeback mother. And okay. And I just acted like a meek person. Okay. And I just heard him. And even though in my heart I felt that was not authentic me, but I said, let me practice. What's authentic about yelling at a person? No, because I didn't agree with him. Who has to agree with what? Why do we have to agree in order to not yell? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's another false story. We can only be together if we agree about everything. Oh, forever. We never agree about everything. Never, it's not possible. What do we do when we don't agree? We try to convince. Yes. Because we have the social belief that only if this person thinks exactly like me, right. we can be close. Yes. Oh. I'm sure. his mother, he should think like I am. Yeah, yeah. right. Then I am a mother even more. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Impossible. <coughs> what do we do in order to stay close and together, even if we don't agree? What do we do? Take a deep breath. Yeah, take a deep breath. It always helps. And have a conversation not in the heat of the moment about the disagreement. So What's let it go on? then and then just another time? I don't know about letting go. Be with whatever you can. Do your best in the moment. That's it. You always do your best anyway. And my best today looks like that and tomorrow it will look like that. And then have a conversation to understand the depth of the meaning of the disagreement. <coughs> then it's not fake. Right? Okay. So we're going to practice that now. Thank you for bringing it. So, any questions up to now? <coughs> yes. No question. Can, I, you, can you just pass her? I have any question. But... Hmm. I mean, I understand what you're saying that it's uh, we don't agree with people 100 percent of the time, but in terms of like very close relationship, let's say romantic relationship. Yes, it gets worse. <laughs> wouldn't you agree <laughs> that it's it's better to relate with someone who is at your level of awareness or at least understanding, where you don't have to have tremendous friction to come to 
understanding like it could exhaust your life force and your whole life just trying to come to a yes so it, would you yes. think it's better like in terms of choice to be with people who kind of closer to your mentality well it's easy to say yes <laughs> and i will say no <laughs> but I, I i mean something in the yes and the no okay so first of all <laughs> of course my ideal romantic picture is oh please be like me <laughs> It's easier. And yet, you might find that it's boring. Because then what you have left to discover? <laughs>